Okay, we can get going. So, thanks again for joining us for this last session of this block. Um, for this talk, uh, we're going to talk about keeping track of the uptime of your geospatial services with Tom Kralidis and Joost van den Broeke. So, I'll let you go. Okay, thanks, Daniel. So basically, uh, Juice and I will walk through um, what the project is all about, the problem statement. We'll give you an overview of the tool and uh, how it's put together, how easy it is to install, um, options for extensibility and plugins, as well as what the future holds. So I will we'll first take you through some what we call OTC, OWS monitoring uh, challenges. So, has any one of you heard this expression, I see pink tiles, right? Uh, yeah? Okay. So, you all know what this means. Um, we expect something like a, like a map being displayed, but instead, this is what we see. Why? Is the server suddenly sending pink tiles today, or? Now probably you know the answer. It is somehow the server is failing and it's uh, sending some um, well-formed exception report, for instance. And in that case, this was open layers and it doesn't really know. You can even configure if it must be pink or any other color. So um, I'm trying to make a point here. I'm, I'm presenting actually some some yeah, challenges, even problems we have running OWS services. Because in another, uh, so this, this is a WMS uh, request, but you can also configure that instead of the well-formed exception report, you can have an in-image error. So why am I showing this? Um, oh yeah, images could be blank. Like uh, you have the backend database, which is filled every night, and it shows maybe some overlay, but uh, the ETL process fails, so you have an empty database, but still valid images, although they're white, <laughs> transparent. The point I'm trying to make is you want to be aware or notified of such failures. And in many cases, there are what you could call HTTP monitors, like maybe uh, you've heard of Pingdom, Up Uptime Robots, or, or any other. Uh, we've seen this in uh, also the other uh, presentation that HTTP is basically used as a channel. So with many of these OWS services, you will get a um, 200, which means an OK code, so a regular uptime monitor will never detect these situations I just showed. Will never detect pink tiles or exception reports. Um, it goes further. Um, the OWS servers usually have something like get capabilities. And it may be OK. And some uptime servers, they, they may check for get capabilities, maybe even for some keywords in there. Um, but it doesn't guarantee that any of the more detailed servers will actually work. Like you have a WMS with 500 layers and layer number 397 is failing. How would you detect that? Um, because I've seen also cases where the capabilities file is actually a static file or generated via some other metadata system. So it goes further. Um, Time-based OGC services like SOS, um, Sensor Things API, you may have, this is a viewer for instance, you may have gaps in your data because maybe a sensor is failing or some, something in the entire pipeline. Um, and you wouldn't be uh, noticed unless you look at the graphs all day, but you would like to be notified when, when this is happening. So, um, like I said, you can, you can run public uptime services or, or internally, but they usually only check on HTTP. Um, so what we actually need, at least what I needed, and that was one of the reasons I joined this project, is um, OWS aware 
service monitoring and um, more um, detailed or uh, said uh, quality of service checking. Um, and since things may uh, fail and then come back up, um, you also need history capture. And I think this is where uh, Tom will take over and lead us through GEO Health Check. Thanks, Juice. So an overview of the project. Um, I was delayed on my way to uh, Phosphor G 2014, at least the code sprint, and it started somewhere on that, on that flight path. So good things happened in the air that day, at least for me. So it's part of the GeoPython community of projects. So if you go to geopython.github.io, there's a slew of projects, many of which are being talked about today. It's part of that uh, suite of projects. So a quick tour. Um, you can go on uh, demo.healthcheck.org at any time, which provides you a, a live demonstration. So here we see a dashboard of, uh, of basically you know, a number of services. You can, you can see uh, you know, a very high level how many services are operational, how many are broken, and so on. You can see a little map of the locations of the actual services. As well, you, uh, you have a list of services. You can filter the list with the search box. You can get a dump of the list at any time in JSON or CSV. It shows some very high level information around uh, the last time the service was checked, what was the, what was the result, some, uh, some, some uh, basic statistics, and an overall reliability, uh, reliability indicator. As you can see on the left hand side, we have various resource types, so different types of, uh, of OGC services and, and, and other things, as well as keywords and, and settings and so on. So here we filter by, uh, by web map service, so you can look at only the WMSs in your, uh, in your deployment of, uh, of GHC. And once you click into a given resource or uh, in this case, a WMS, it gives you a deep, it starts to drill in and tells you a little bit about the service, um, all the, uh, the high-level information. Then you can see a graph below which shows, uh, you know, red is obviously when it was, uh, when, when the checks failed, and green is when they passed, and as well, how long it took to do, uh, to do the given checks. If you wanted to add a uh, service, you can just basically log in. You have to create a username and password and register. After you do that, then you log in and you can, um, there's a uh, add resource, there's an add button up at the top of the UI, and it gives you a bunch of different things, uh, resource types you want to add. So if you wanted to add a WMS, for example, you add the WMS into your uh, add resource, so very straightforward kind of uh, uh, wizard to way to add something to GHC. At this point, um, we have a, uh, uh, a concept called probes, which are once you add a service into GeoHealthCheck, there's a there's a, a, a various level of granularity of the kinds of checks you can do. So there's a default check where it just has a get capabilities, almost like a smoke test, if you will. Then there's a bunch of other checks which, if you want, you can uh, you can choose to add them, and then there's extra extra checks being done. So there's another example of. Uh, for example, some of the default values that you can set when uh, when interacting with this, when doing the tests against the service, you can also do it. You can also configure the checks to whether you want to test every single layer on that service, or you just want to uh, test certain layers against that service. So that's the the nice thing about what we have here in GeoHealth Check is that you can configure it to do very specific things against the service. So if you know that uh, what a specific layer is powered by a database uh, and you want to see how that layer is performing, you can do a test against just that layer and making sure it actually does what it's supposed to do. So more examples here of pre-configuring how you wanted to test the service. And then um, when services fail, we get an email um, configuration. There's an email configuration component in the in the in the Geo Health Check. So we get an email which tells us, "Look, this service failed, and here's why it failed." And then you click the details link, and that takes you to uh, uh, a page like this. 
I think there's some debugging information here, yeah. So it tells you why, uh, why the service failed. In this case, we can see from the service exception that some file was missing. And then when a service is fixed, you get another email that tells you it's fixed. So it's very much, if you've ever used Travis, that sends you emails, failed, fixed, still failing, and so on, it follows that same kind of spirit. So I'll just move it over to Juice now. Yes, thank you, Tom. Um, and by the way, also, uh, uh, additionally, uh, uh, with email, you may also um, configure webhooks, and uh, we're, qu we're quite open. Um, I will lead you a bit to the um, high-level architecture. So there are actually three parts in uh, GeoHealthCheck. There's a, um, a dashboard which is a regular Python web app written in Flask, we just saw. Um, but uh, in the back, there's something we call the HealthCheck runner, which um, well, runs the health checks actually. And it's, uh, as we can see, um, um, totally built uh, with plugins for all these uh, probes that we uh, just saw. And there's a database. And, well, it's a simple high-level architecture where they are uh, related in this way, so you configure everything to your uh, web app and the runner will take that information to do the health checks. So the dashboard we just saw, um, Flask web app, you can do uh, standard Python uh, VSGI, uh, whiskey it is also called, or run it with Nginx, uh, Apache 2, JUnicorn, standard Python. So the health check runner runs the health checks, and it's driven by a uh, scheduler because um, you can also configure how often you want to do these uh, health checks, and some you may want to do uh, every 10 minutes. And so this process, this is basically a back-end process. Or you can choose also to run both the health check runner and the dashboard in a single process. Um, and it takes care for reporting when it's up or down, or and you can even get a daily status uh, report, which is also sometimes handy. And we have different ways of uh, notifying. So there's email, but also you can configure webhooks to um, other um, <coughs> monitoring, uh, remote monitoring applications. So the health check model is really, um, yeah, we built in some ab abstraction here. So what we call a resource is basically your uh, your endpoints identified by a URL. So, for instance, a WMS endpoint, and then um, the probe is really the um, thing that <coughs> initiates the check. It fires uh, requests on the endpoint, but doesn't interpret them because that's another uh, aspect. Those are the checks. So you can configure probes, and for each probe, you can configure one or more checks. And for each resource, you can uh, configure one or more probes. So let's see. Um, so the probe has n checks. Each check ev evaluates a, a single result. So for instance, if what comes back is a, a HTTP um, error code in the 400 or 500 range, that is typically what a check could do. Or if a WMS response is really an image of type image. Um, so and finally, um, it uh, establishes a um, run report. And each probe or check is, is a plug-in. So it's a plug because there's no end really to what type of uh, health checks you would want to do. So um, it's built of plugins from, from, from the bottom, ba basically. Now, yeah, and the database uh, will basically uh, has a data model. I think it's shown in the here with all the entities that are involved. It's not very complex. And because we also have users, there are also users involved, because users, they can be added uh, by configuration, or you can configure that any user, like on our demo site, can, do, can register themselves. But 
There are cases where, of course, you wouldn't want that. And I think Tom will take us through the installation. So it's a uh, standard uh, Python setup with um, setup and management tasks. You can also use Docker, which allows you to easily install, um, as you can imagine. There's a, a look at some of the core settings and basically a Python file, and you set each of those uh, as you wish. Oops. Um, I won't talk too much about this given the time we have left, but basically we mentioned the fact that there's plugins, um, so you're allowed to create your own types of uh, checks and probes within those checks. So if you have uh, some sort of API, which isn't even geospatial. You can you can uh, write a plugin to uh, you can write a plugin to do the test that you want and do the probes that you want. So it's fully extensible, and you can define those uh, in your Python code, and then a UI shows up and, and renders it all. So it's fully flexible in terms of adding new types of service APIs on into the uh, into the health check. Oops. Roadmap. It's always fun to think about the future, I guess. Um, so GeoHealth Check is, uh, is looking at doing a REST API for the actual uh, things that need to talk to the back end so that we can have a really thin front end. Right now, it's a little bit of a mixture. So we're looking at refactoring that. We're looking at Vue.js in terms of updating the, uh, the UI. Um, we're almost done the Python 2 to 3 uh, migration, as, just like we've heard in some of the other Python proje uh, projects. And we, we're looking at integrating it with other uh, more mainstream monitoring tools. And uh, in addition, at, at the OGC level, there's also something called the Quality of Service and Experience uh, Domain Working Group. So we're loosely involved at that, looking at how they're working on particularly the, uh, the QoS things. And I know that GeoHealthCheck has been used in some of the uh, test beds. In, uh, in OGC, so whatever work is coming out of the OGC, it's important for uh, I think it's important for us to look at that work and try to support it um, as much as we can. And you can help. So I know you've all forked the project now. Um, there's there's lots of issues and there's a lot of enhancements. A lot of work can be a lot of help can be with the documentation or testing. So we're certainly open to uh, contributions. Oops, I'll move it over to use at this point. Okay. So in case, um, a shameless plug here, um, you uh, don't want to go to the, well, it's not so much trouble of installing it, but maybe it's nice to have something which is really outside of your infrastructure. Um, we uh, of also run a, uh, let's say you call it a cloud service, a subscription service, called uh, geocast.com and um, then basically uh, you get what you get is really a geo health check your own geo health check instance and then you can configure uh, whatever you uh, your resources want and you can also shield it it's uh, with uh, authentication so yeah I think we're about uh, it, and here are all the links to the to the project. So the main link is really geohealthcheck.org. This presentation is also online. We can also uh, because there's m quite some details still on on plugin development. And um, for instance, we had a, a great contribution from the GeoNode community. <coughs> I think it was GeoSolutions that had a. Uh, a probe for a GeoNode uh, backend because GeoNode uh, also provides um, uh, connects to lots of OWSs and that to to do that all manually. So that's the kind of contributions that that we really welcome. And thank you. We have the. I think all three authors are here. Tom, I, Hannes is. Hannes Reuter is also, he was here in the last, yeah, there he is. And there's more contributors, of course, for, the, for all the, some of the plugins and so. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Tom and Juist.
We have a few minutes. You're right on time, so we have a few minutes left for a few questions. Let's start here. Sorry, is it possible to perform uh, some basic bulk loading? Because uh, if you have uh, hundreds of uh, OGC services to check, uh, uh, it would be useful to load them uh, with uh, maybe basic uh, checks uh, in order to start a basic uh, performance test. Uh, so just uh, checking uh, the get capabilities, for example. That's a good question. We we did have some functionality in the back which allows you to bulk load, but we can we can bring that out a little bit further to uh, like basically let you run a command line to you know load these uh, hundred services kind of thing and load them and, and let them be tested kind of thing. So feel free to open an issue because it, it just needs a little bit of work. It's not. Uh, I think there's actually an issue open for that. Yeah. Now I understand. This is it's for bulk loading configuration of uh, services. Yeah. So if you have a WMTS, uh, is there functionality to test each Zoom level? Good question. Um, w, we have something for TMS. Yeah. But I don't think we have yet for WMTS, also because it's a little bit complex uh, protocol. But uh, that, that is typically a, uh, a contribution we would uh, welcome. Um, so basically, you have to do a new plugin, maybe? Yeah, but you could use the existing, uh, because there's, there's, for instance, a probe which allows you to do any HTTP request. So that could be. A, a, a request to a WMTS, but uh, uh, but not yet in the sense that we have for TMS and for WMS, WFS, even WFS3, or uh, I should say uh, OGC Features API. So, hi. Um, I want to know, I'm not a programmer, but I need to make some personalized probes. For instance, to know if the WMS has every parameter completed, like the name, the contact information, that sort of thing. Is it really hard to do? Do I need to know Python to, to be able to do it? Or from the UI, I can do it? it yeah, no, yeah, the question is really more about conformance, it sounds like. Yeah. And probably um, there's something called site tests from OGC, which is more suited for that. You don't have to program them yourself. But Tommy, Tom knows more on OGC. You'd probably have to write some Python. Like what I'm hearing is you want to look for specific elements and yes. see if they're there and what's in there and everything. Because we are thinking about implementing the health, health check to be able to know if the WMS has every element the national SDI requires. And we don't want to use many, many software or uh, other. Uh? Yes, yes. We, we don't want to install several ways to, to check it if we can do it all in the health, health check. Yeah, so you can use, I mean, I w you can use, uh, you'd have to write code. Uh -huh. But having said that, the code that GeoHealthCheck uses underneath to interact with all those things is a tool called OWS Lib. So most of that functionality to read that content model is there. So all you have to do is write a few lines on the checks. Uh -huh. And so you're, you're, it's almost, you're halfway there. And it's but you from, have to write Python. And, yeah. and, the, and the parameters I need are the, in the OGC documentation? Or in the lib? It should be in the lib. Oh, OK. Yeah. OK. Thank you. Maybe another um, suggestion is to use uh, an XML parser you can call and then do schema validation against the XSD schema from OGC. But that's a good one, yeah. If you do a health check on a WMS, uh, do you then always get like the same Style or do you random move between? Also, a good question. Um, actually, we have a um, 
uh, a structured way of, of testing uh, WMS, like uh, GetMap, and but it will always do the same area. But there is also uh, it's a little bit experimental, but works. It's, it's we call it the WMS drill down, and that does this kind of uh, random behavior, which sometimes. So yes, but that could be improved a bit. This uh, you you can see it in the plugins. Uh, it's called WMS drill down. <laughs> But it will take random areas and uh, even random uh, formats, but it usually fails because WMS says, well, I support these 100 formats. Now then I try, we tried one and of the, the a random one. So, yeah. Probably, yeah. It takes some random, whatever that WMS said it supports, we take some random, but. Um,